Hello, Rabbi Luxin, and hello, Ramaz. Our community suffered a very big loss this week with the passing of Rabbi Dr. Norman Lamb. Not tragic in that he was old and lived a very full and long life, but left a very big vacuum in our community. From 1976 to 2003, he was president of Yeshiva University, which is where I knew him because I was in YU during those years. And as president, he had a very big impact on the institution and on the Jewish community. Institutionally, he saved it from financial ruin in the 1970s and grew it to a very, very stable position financially, academically. He grew the school and led it to become ranked in the top 100 universities of America. And of course, the Judaic studies provided and provides a yeshiva, Gemara, Torah learning environment par excellence. He championed a slogan which he used, Torah Umada, which refers to the synthesis between Torah study and general knowledge, and refers to really the entire lifestyle of the modern Orthodox synthesized lifestyle that we all know of. Before he came to Yeshiva University, he was a rabbi at, in the Upper West Side in the Jewish Center, and pre, prior to that in Springfield, Massachusetts, and before that was an assistant rabbi at KJ. He was a scholar, he was a PhD in chemistry, he was a writer, he wrote over 10 books and many articles, edited and published many journals and scholarly works in many different areas. And some of the students at Ramaz might have learned at least a quote of his because in the Miranda case in the Supreme Court, there's a footnote in the Supreme Court decision which refers to Rabbi Lamb's article on the subject of self-incrimination in Jewish law, which many of the classes in Ramaz study in the 11th grade. So his loss leaves a real vacuum in our community. And Rabbi Luxstein, thank you for joining us. I see that a lot of his experiences must have intersected with yours, not, not only because so many Ramaz students study at Yeshiva University, but you both led very large Orthodox educational institutions in Manhattan, both led large Orthodox synagogues in the upper uptown Manhattan, and you both spent a lot of time at Yeshiva, Yeshiva University. I was hoping that you can share with our students a little bit about your relationship with him and what you think his main contribution was and is to our community. Rabbi Shilowitz, thank you for asking me to speak about my friend, my colleague, and my teacher, Rabbi Dr. Norman Lamb. Uh, our relationship goes back to uh, the year 1951-52, the year after he got smicha from the Rabbi Yitzchak Elchanan Theological Seminary, known uh, as Ritz, uh, the place from which I got smicha, and Rabbi Shayowitz, you got smicha, and uh, just about all of the rabbeim in Ramaz, the Judaic Studies faculty, and particularly the Talmud faculty, where we, from which we all got smicha, except for Rabbi Weiser, who's in a class by himself. Uh, that in itself is important. I'm gonna get back to that uh, uh, in a moment. Uh, I, I started out with a personal relationship because he was a rabbinic assistant at KJ in 51-52, after, just after he got smicha, while he was working on his master's and subsequently his doctorate, and before he had a full job. And he used to come to our home virtually every Friday night and Shabbos, uh, and eat with the family. And of course, he learned a lot from my father. Aloha Shalom, Rabbi Joseph H. Lukstein, who of course was the founder and first principal of Ramaz. Uh, he was very much like my father, uh, a very well-rounded scholar, a magnificent orator, and a very precise 
preparer of whatever he wanted to say. He could speak off the cuff, but anytime he had an important speech to deliver, even on a Shabbos morning, he used to write out his speech completely. Something which I try to teach you, Rabbi Shiawitz, when you were my student in homiletics at Yeshiva University. Uh, and he wrote a beautiful English. Uh, he was also my first really uh, deep Talmud teacher. I learned with him the summer of 1952. I used to drive to Crown Heights where he lived and sit in his parents' dining room. And from nine to 12, we learned Maseches Kedushin, the first Mishnah. I believe it's the first 11 blot. Uh, so he was a friend, he was a teacher, and he was also a colleague. But as you said in your introduction, he was a giant in uh, the Jewish community in the United States of America. Uh, you're right, he took over Yeshiva University at a time when it had a huge deficit. I think it was something like a hundred million dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and he raised a lot of money for yeshiva, just by virtue of who he was and the way people saw him. Uh, and he pulled out, he pulled uh, K YU out from a deep, deep hole. But more importantly, as you said, he was the originator, I believe, of the term Torah Umada. And if he wasn't the originator, he certainly was the person who made it popular and made it the core of what Yeshiva University is today. A place that is fundamentally grounded in Torah, but a very wide ranging place. I want to read to you something that was written a while ago by my colleague, Rabbi Mark Angel, who used to be the rabbi in the Spanish Portuguese synagogue. Uh, and he, he writes about what a modern Orthodox rabbi is supposed to be. And after discussing his grounding in halacha, and his commitment to Torah or mitzvot in an uncompromising uh, way, uh, uh, Rabbi Angel, just a moment, uh, uh, writes as follows. While being steeped in traditional rabbinic learning, the ideal modern Orthodox rabbi is aware of contributions from modern scholarship. He is interested in the intellectual currents of the time. He reads widely and seeks to learn in a spirit of intellectual curiosity. He brings the wisdom of Torah to the challenges of our time and the insights of modernity to the study of Torah. This was not written about Rabbi Lamb, but it could have been. And Rabbi Angel actually posted it online uh, from his previous publication today when he wrote a short eulogy for Rabbi Lamb and then referred the reader to this article on the ideal modern Orthodox rabbi. Uh, he wrote, as you say, 10 books. He spoke the king's English, uh, or the queen's English, if you will. Uh, he was extremely well-read and well-educated in general culture. His actual major in college was chemistry. And I'm not sure that he wasn't originally perhaps going to go into medicine, but he decided to go into the rabbinate which was to the great advantage of the modern Orthodox community in America. Because Yeshiva University is the mother institution of modern Orthodoxy. Just 
As I said before, look around Ramaz. Where are its teachers from? And not only the Rabbeim in the upper school, many, most of the Judaic studies teachers in the lower school and in the middle school are trained in Yeshiva College or Stern College. And they all have this same quality. They're well trained in Judaica, in Jewish law, in commitment to Torah and mitzvot, but they're also broad. They're part of modern culture. Rabbi Lamb was very familiar with modern culture and pop culture. He used to quote it a good deal. He was a master punster. You can just imagine him saying, I don't want to take it on the lamb. Uh, although his name was spelled L-A-M-M. -M. Um, uh, and I guess he liked lamb chops. He certainly must have used that many, many times. He was a great friend, a great colleague, and he was a great modern Orthodox leader for our time. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing all those recollections. You're welcome. And I 